everybody. This is Lainey from Hilltop Home Place. Well, we're in. We are living here at our new property and I'm so excited. It has been a ton of work though. Last Wednesday, this is Tuesday, January 3rd. Okay, I have to stop and think of what day it is. I'm all confused. Anyway, last Wednesday, the moving trucks brought our stuff from the storage sheds to here and uh, dropped everything off. And some good friends of mine, Mary and Heather, were here with me when the truck got here and we helped them unload and helped put boxes in the right room and get things to the right room. And then they helped me put my bed together so I would have at least a place to sleep that night. So that was good. And uh, and then, whew, then the chaos began. My daughter did come and help me some Thursday to sort things. And I, I didn't pack everything I guess the best way because a lot of times they encourage you to pack just for that room, label the box for that room, and then that way everything goes to the right place. But to be honest with you, when you're packing boxes, you just run out of things sometimes to put in a box from a room, but you want to fill the box because you don't want to waste the box that you've had to pay for. So I end up just kind of filling it in with whatever, and I mean whatever. It could be cans of stuff from the kitchen to linens to just anything from bathrooms or whatever so when i open a box it might say fragile lamp but when i open it there's no telling what's in it there's a lamp but there's all kind of other stuff so it goes here there and yonder all over my house and really when it comes down to it when you're moving you're the only one that really knows where everything needs to go and sometimes you just have to get in there by yourself when you can think and just get her done. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, Monday night, up to last night, I was up to midnight or more, <laughs> one thirty one night, and then back up the next morning going at it. And that's really the only way that I've gotten through all this. I could show you a couple of pictures <laughs> of the tornado zone my house turned into, but you know how that is. When you move, it's just crazy. Uh, you try to pack very neatly and try to be very organized and then it just all falls apart. <laughs> it all falls apart when it gets in your house and you can't do this until that's done and you can't do this until that's done. There's just things I can't get done. However, <laughs> tell you what I did do today uh, and it's not pretty. I'll show it to you real quick. It's not pretty, but I got it done and I'm going to tell you what, that was a mountain I climbed and it was uh, harder than I thought. Let me tell you what it is. That little bitty dryer vent there. That little dryer vent. I had to go to the hardware store and buy that vent, which has a pipe behind it. There's a little pipe that goes from that vent straight back. I had to get that. So you buy the vent and it's got a pipe that goes back. Then there's a flexible metal pipe that connects to it. And that connects into a 90 degree thing that goes up to the pipe that was coming out of my dryer. <laughs> now, if you've done this before, you know what I'm talking about. There's a there's a pipe that comes down from your trailer, straight down, about, I don't know, about nine inches. You connect that 90 degree on it, you connect that other metal pipe to the metal pipe that comes with this plastic thing, and you vent it to the outside of your trailer. You don't wanna vent it underneath your trailer. But I'm gonna tell you what, this was a booger. <laughs> This was a booger. I had to pull the skirting off the bottom in like like a long place. Um, I, I knew the pipe was right there, but you have to pop that off and you have to cut a hole in it and mount this white thing to it. <laughs> and then all this skirting had to come off because I had to have room to work to reach. I had to reach back there to put the nuts on that. It was a it was a mess. And did I mention? that it was raining the entire time. My whole backyard right now is wet, sopping wet, everything. Everything's drippy and wet back here. And um, it's supposed to be raining right now, but I think somehow the system kind of maybe went north of us, I don't know. But all I know is when I was putting that thing on today, I was about to cry, because that's what I do when I get really frustrated <laughs> and really upset and I could not believe how hard it was to put all that pipe together and put clamps on it and have it all not come apart. And then to put this little 
hole in my skirting and mount this little plastic vent covering. I couldn't believe how hard it was. I don't like to sound defeated with things. I don't, but I always have this saying, nothing's easy. I always say that. And I, the reason is nothing's easy. <laughs> I just, I came out here to do this and I was trying to beat the weather. It was not raining. But of course, the minute I get my skirting pulled apart and laying on, you know, laying out and undone. And the minute I get the hole put in there for the little dryer vent, the rain comes. So it wasn't lightning. So I had to just stay with it. I couldn't just have, I, I thought this big storm line was coming through. All I could think of was, oh, great. I've got this skirting off my trailer and now rain's just gonna be able to blow up under my trailer and wind and everything. And I was worried that it might compromise the other part of the skirting to have part of it off because then there's no wind break really. It's just like wind can get up under your trailer. So <laughs> nothing's easy. <laughs> I got all that off and that's when the trouble started. The pipes didn't want to stay together. Um, I, I tightened the little clamps and they just seemed to not be tight enough. So anyway, I finally got everything as tight as I could. I put some duct tape on every little seam and finally got it vented out of the house. And I've been drying clothes this evening because we were just about out of clothes. But it seems like every little chore you go to do, whether it's putting light bulbs in something, I put a light bulb in this light while I go outside and it wouldn't work. I tried another bulb and it wouldn't work. I tried breakers and the light wouldn't come on. I finally tried a third bulb and it worked. It was just the first two bulbs were duds out of the box. So I don't know, I, it's, it's never easy. <laughs> nothing's ever just simple and easy i guess it's because when you're stressed and when you're under a lot of uh stress with just so much to do just overwhelming things to do i've hung three tv mounts uh tonight i'm hanging curtain rods um just moving organizing all of my food things that i didn't realize how much food i had but um anyway trying to find places for all that when you kind of are under the gun I guess everything you go to do seems a little bit harder than it should be, but that's the way it is. And I'm um, getting through it, getting through it. <laughs> but I, I still, I'm clinging to my thought of it's never easy. I, that's, that's just the way I feel. To update on my Egyptian walking onions, they're coming up. See them right there? See them right there? I planted 22 bulbs. I remember counting them. There's another one coming up right there. There's coming up. Right out there in the middle. And I've got some more down on that end coming up. I remember counting that I had 22 bulbs. And right now I can only see like nine plants coming up. But that's okay. I feel like other ones will just sit dormant during um, the winter. And they could still come up. So I thought I'd show you the ramp. We finally got it finished. The part between the carport and the main ramp, Mel and I did last Monday, two days before we moved in. So we got that done. You walk up on it now. And it's just, it's wonderful. I come up and down this ramp all the time. But I tell you what, I kind of enjoy it right now with no railings on it because I can jump off and go and do whatever I need to do. Here shortly I'll do the railings. I still haven't done them yet but um it'll get done. But what I wanted to show you the reason I'm bringing you over on this side to the ramp today is because I need to start thinking about planting and I would love some ideas from everybody. Let me walk up the ramp and I'll keep, kind of give you a little rundown of what's going on in my mind but I would appreciate any thoughts. Okay, I'm up on the front porch by the door. I have this whole area here that I'd love to do something with. And I will be honest with you, I don't want to spend any money on plants from the nursery. I don't want just landscaping. I would love to just bring an edible garden right up to our house. I'd love to plant bigger bushes here. I don't know, I, I've never planted artichokes. I don't know how good artichokes are gonna grow for me, but I keep thinking of artichoke bushes. They can be perennials. They can stay for year to year to year in climates like ours. I'm in zone 8B and it gets pretty warm here. I'm in shorts right now and it's January 3rd. We do get some cold spells, but it usually warms back up. And a lot of those kind of plants can overwinter 
in climates like mine. I've never grown them. If anybody out there has grown artichoke bushes, let me know. Do you think they would be a pretty plant to try to have three or four of them along the front here? Am I thinking about that right? I just feel like they might be. And then maybe let some go to flower instead of always harvesting and have them be an ornamental. Now I've got the, this is a four foot wide by about 17 or 18 foot long section here. I definitely, uh, I need a little to trench it out because I see that pooling right there a little bit in that one area. But I definitely want to plant this sparsely. I don't want it just covered to where I can't walk down in there. I would like to plant some type of bushes some uh, that wouldn't mind getting a little shade because this area will be a little blocked off by the um, ramp. I wouldn't mind planting some plants that would have some height to them but that I could walk up in there amongst them to pick things and all. I could maybe have some other little plants around the base, but I'd like to pretty much just have some bushes that I could harvest off of. What kind of ideas can y'all give me about that section? I'd appreciate it. This over here, I, I would love to do something at some point, but what I'm gonna focus on, you see how wet everything is right now. It's just a big rainy mess. My driveway is just, soaking wet okay as you come to the end of this section of the ramp i have a grassy area here and there's a couple of stumps there i'm really not going to worry about them i'm just going to plant around them but what i was thinking what i'm kind of wanting to do and i'd appreciate any input is i don't want people driving into my carport this way that's not really the entrance to it the entrance to it is is from the, the back side over here i would like to plant like a flower bed along this concrete here along the concrete um i would love to plant things in an unconventional way and just kind of have a, a walking garden and all but i also wouldn't mind having a long flower bed to put a whole row of something if i want to do a whole row of bush beans with something else maybe planted up there in there with it that's more of a perennial I just want to be able to do like a long row of a few things. I'm not really going to have a plowed up square garden right now, but I do want to be able to put in some bush beans and things like that. So I was thinking about, about that for here, along in there, but all out in here, I would love to have something. And then between the ramp and that little sectional ramp that goes to the carport, I have this whole area. This right here is the concrete pad that used to be under the old trailer that was here we have concrete strips all up under our trailer and there's two more there's one here and then there's one that goes under this ramp but i could i'm trying to take advantage of what i have and i could plant things on this side and that side that would you know grow over to where you really wouldn't see that concrete a whole whole lot but it would be there to give me some footage to walk along without being in mud or whatever to harvest. I'm thinking because, I, I don't know, it's hard to tell. That's a hill up there and the water comes down <laughs> and it comes along my, it comes right up in here and you see how it washes onto my carport. That's why I was thinking of doing the flower bed here to kind of take advantage of that water coming in would keep it watered without me having to worry about watering it as much. Put the water to use, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And keep people from turning in there and using that as some kind of entrance to my driveway. It would serve two purposes. It would, it would really keep that water, uh, give that water something to do besides just washing up on my driveway. So I was thinking about that, but also the water kind of comes here too. It's just how my, my yard's laid out. A lot of it is sloped towards this carport. And so it comes this direction and it wants to kind of go that way. Now our ramps up off the ground, the water can go under it if, it if it ever got that high, it could go under it, but that's okay. But I want to plant things here that can grow in moist soil. They'll get sun all up in here in the mornings through the afternoon that part back there is a little will be a little more shady but i've never grown watercress i never have 
but I was thinking of my aqua longleaf watercress here because watercress wants moisture. If you don't grow it in a moist, wet soil, then you're supposed to water it a whole, whole lot. Well, I could cut down on my watering if I planted it in this moist, wet soil. I've got a lot more seeds and I just got all my seeds back yesterday. They came home. And so I've got to go through them, but that's just one that comes to my mind without me really looking through anything right now. This other side, same thing. It gets some water because of the flow of the water. I don't really know what I want to plant here. Uh, I really need to think about it. I kind of want plants that'll take to moist soil, that'll kind of establish root systems so that this doesn't just stay a muddy bog. <laughs> I don't want that. I, I want plants alongside my trailer and I need things. Um, I'm even thinking things with tap roots, things like that, that'll kind of even pull water. But what about Jerusalem artichokes? I don't think I ever got any yet. They're on my list of perennials that I had talked about in my perennial video. I'll link that at the bottom. But I don't think I've gotten them yet, but I, I might could uh, think about putting those here. Now I know they're a little bit invasive and I know that where you plant them, you pretty much need to have them there. So I'm asking your advice. If you've planted Jerusalem artichokes, would this be a good place to plant them? Say if I planted them along the, here, are they gonna end up taking all of this over or what do you think? I would appreciate any advice because I just love to hear ideas. I've had so much going on that I haven't been able to focus completely on my garden and my yard. And, but I want to get with it here shortly. I want to get with it. And if you have some good advice, hey, I'll try it. I'll go with it. I'm, I'm, I don't have the time to just research this to death, but I'll go with it. This is concrete sticking out from the, the runner that kind of goes along under this I, I i plan that to where these are on a concrete base so it stabilizes this ramp a little bit more but this piece of a uh, concrete runner comes out technically goes all the way to like that water hose but it's just buried with mud right now and then this runner goes here so you could plant things along there i have lots of leaf mulch there that soil is really good there uh this stays muddy and wet kind of <laughs> It'll dry up when it gets to be where it doesn't rain much. But in the winter like this, with it drippy, rainy a lot, it, it stays wet. So, more more watercress. Do I need a whole yard full of watercress? And then this right here, you could have plantings here. It could be Jerusalem artichokes or whatever. A concrete so that I could harvest and have somewhere to walk. Planting here, concrete, and then a planting there. So that's what I'm kind of pondering right now. That's what I'm kind of thinking about. Let me know what you think. What good grows in moist soil? That's one thing. What good uh, edible things or herbs or anything grows towards this back part here where it doesn't get a whole lot of sun? That's one thing. Some of them need moist soil, but with sun because of these front things up here will get sun. Some of the things that are tucked along this inside part of the ramp that's near the, the trailer, they won't get as much sun. So I kind of need a variation of things. Anything you could recommend, I appreciate it. Coming up here shortly, I wanted to do a video on what it cost us to get here. What did it cost us to, once we sold our house, to actually get this trailer on this property and set it up? And what all did that involve? It might be a long video because things, you just have to go over a lot of things when you're talking about moving, but I'm hoping that it'll help people um, just from my experience. I can only speak to my experience. There's so many variations, but you know what? I'm gonna talk about some of those variations in my video because um, there's a lot of things to think about when you're doing things like this. I'm not saying I did everything right. I'm not saying I did everything the cheapest way. There were points where I just needed it done. I didn't, you can argue about prices. You can get 14 bids. Um, you can wait on someone to do it who will do it cheaper, but they can't get to you for three weeks and all. Sometimes you just have to juggle your time. The Where you're staying, we were staying with our daughter and them in the brand new house to them. 
they didn't really get to enjoy their brand new house uh, until we moved out just last week. And so I didn't want to stay with them forever while we just drug on and on trying to save some money here, there, and yonder. I, I, at some point, you just have to make some decisions. I will tell you what decisions I made, and I would love to hear feedback on that. Um, it seems like a lot of the videos that I've done about this trailer move have been really um, watched, I guess I would say, just watched, and um, that surprises me. <laughs> I kind of thought this was going to be a little bit of a bummer to not have gardening content and all this, this winter while I was doing this. But it seems like people are really interested in mobile home moving and stuff like that. So I'm going to try to run through what I spent. I'm going to make an extensive list right down to this dryer vent that I put in today. That was $32, I think, for all the parts for that. It adds up. It adds up. And it's things you don't think about, but you have to have. And they all add up after a while. And it can really hit you. And I think a lot of people right now are trying to get debt free or at least reduce their bills. A lot of people, it may not come down to the bills, but it may just come down to they want to get out of the subdivision and move to more rural where they can have animals and try to be more self-sustainable. And in your mind, you might think of the big thing like, well, how much does a trailer cost or how much does the land cost or whatever. All those are variables, which... I can't deal with because they're variables depending on where you live and all that stuff. But the setup cost, the cost of what you need to actually be able to move in and spend the night in that trailer, <laughs> those, uh, we prob we're kind of all in the same boat. You need electricity, you need water, you need sewer, you need a dryer, you need a washer, <laughs> you need some uh, just creature comforts that make life a little bit easier. And so I will tell you what I spent on those things and just give you an idea. Because if you don't factor those things in, when you're thinking of moving, if all you're looking at is real estate prices and mobile home prices or whatever, and you forget about these things, it will come back to bite you. And it might mean you having to abandon your plans if you don't factor it in. And the reason I say that is because my husband and I pass a mobile home, a double wide, down the road from us that has been sitting there for over a year. It got moved to the property, it got set up, and it's sitting there, and it's never been finished. And I think either something happened to the people or they just don't simply have the money to do what they need to do to get it properly permitted and all where we live. So it can, uh, it can really bite you if you don't think about it. So I'm gonna try to do that video here shortly. I'm try to run the numbers and get everything together and really kind of present it to you in the way that I can to try to help you understand what it costs to actually set all this up. This is Lainey from Hilltop Home Place. I'll have as many videos as I can coming. I'm gonna to try to really hit the ground running in 2023. I didn't have internet, so I'm just posting today, but uh, I've been thinking about everybody and I appreciate you watching my videos. And this year is the year I'm going to try to grow my channel as much as possible. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for watching me. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>